A long time ago, in what seems like another lifetime now, I would regularly get into an argument with a spiritual person. They didn't really adhere to any particular religion. They had a host of woo ideas about quantum and intentionality and the secret and all of this. And we would argue. Um, and they would argue respectfully. And I would do my best <laughs> to be reasonably nice to them, even though everything that they believed was complete toss. But they called me a bodhisattva, and this was meant partially as an insult, because I reject all that spirituality for the rationalist attempting to be objective mindset that I still have now. But they also in part meant it as a, a compliment. Our arguments were respectful and they seemed to hold me in reasonable regard. Now a bodhisattva is someone who is capable of achieving nirvana, enlightenment, but who chooses to defer that out of compassion for others, out of compassion for their suffering. Someone who chooses to stay around and help guide others towards nirvana. Now this has stuck with me because it appeals to my enormous ego, but it has also stuck with me because it has shown that opponents can have respect for one another, and that if nothing else, they respected the fact that I had principles and I stuck to them and I applied them honestly and consistently, that my worldview, the way in which I attacked the world, the way in which I struggled with problems, was all informed by a cohesive and complete set of ideas. And that's true. And I think that quality, that value of, of principle, of universalism, to the extent that any such thing is possible, I think that has gone to a, a large extent. It is very hard to find anyone who truly stands by their principles who applies them consistently. And when we find people who do, they tend to draw the ire of all sides of any particular conflict. Take racism, for example. My principle is that racism is pointless. Race is essentially meaningless. There are no day-to-day -day meaningful consequences of race other than the ones that we choose to impose ourselves. And so according to that principle, it is wrong to differentiate on the basis of race. And this is true whether it's white people being racist to black people or black people being racist to white people. Even acknowledging those, those differences in melanin level is itself feeding the beast that is racism. And yet this principle seems to escape people. We have people on the far right embracing racism and embracing dodgy pseudoscience about the inferiority, not even just the difference, but the inferiority of other races, when scientifically speaking there is barely such a thing as race in the first place, if at all. And then on the left we have people justifying their hatred of white people on the basis of race, even seeking to redefine language in order to exclude and excuse themselves from racism. 
And it is obvious that those on the left on this issue are hypocrites. To anyone who hasn't been brainwashed into compromising that principle, to anyone who is racist, their position seems consistent, I suppose, but to anyone who actually thinks, no, this is not a consistent position. If racism is bad, racism is bad. Historically, we can look at the effect of racism against blacks and the resentment and the resistance and the violence that it wrought. But rather than learn from this, we see that a counter racism came up. It's not reverse racism, it's just racism. In a quest to fight back, this anti-racism movement became a racist. It began to blame all whites for the actions of perhaps 1% of wealthy whites in past history. Something which nobody today carries any responsibility for. Just as the Nazis created their identity around Aryanism and a mythological pseudo-scientific past of superiority and historical empire and all the rest, so we see black racists creating similarly mythological identities. In the nation of Islam we see them saying that blacks are not just equal but superior in some way, that melanin gives them some kind of spiritual antenna to the universe, that whites are some mutant created by an evil scientist. It's Scientology for black racists. And in response to this racism towards whites, we see, again, this cycle. We see racism from whites increasing again. We see Nazis back on our streets. We see the KKK visibly in public. See, being racist only creates more racism. And it's just a pendulum swing which race it goes towards. The only way off this cycle, this wheel of suffering, is to stop being racist and to treat everyone the same. It is to re-embrace principle. Zhang.